so besides the enjoyment of the food when you're getting to cook outside, and you actually can cook inside with these Dutch ovens as well, but more fun and handier cooking outside with them, uh, cast iron as we know it today has been around since like 600 or 700 AD. Now it didn't always look like the ovens we use today. In fact, it was more like the kettles or cauldrons that you'll see. In fact, Shakespeare made sure that cast iron would be remembered, I think, for forever in his play Macbeth when the witches are talking, you know, uh, uh, can't even remember the quote now, but it's cauldron's bubble is part of it in there. And so it's even a part of literature that we all have to learn. Uh, so the ovens like these are referred to with the ones that have the, the feet on the bottom, the flat lid, either as, as woodsman ovens or uh, camp ovens. They've had other nicknames of a baking kettle, a stew pot. I mean, you can find references in historic diaries, but most likely they're probably talking, if they don't stay, say specifically skillet, they're probably talking about a Dutch oven. So colonial times, cast iron was used. Paul Revere's credited with thinking to do the flange on the lid so coals didn't fall off. Who knows for sure, we'll let him have the credit. But so colonial times, uh, Lewis and Clark had Dutch ovens with them. Pioneers moving west, even before them, the mountain men, they would have uh, usually one Dutch oven to be able to do their cooking in as well. Then as you, from the pioneers moving west, you get into the Civil War. Soldiers sometimes, if not for themselves individually, but as uh, in their camps, would have Dutch ovens for cooking. And then what most people, even if they're not familiar with a Dutch oven, know about is the cattle drives because the, the Dutch ovens were the cooking tool that chuck wagon cooks used. When you go and watch uh, chuck wagon gatherings or like National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum's chuck wagon festival, that's what they're cooking in primarily is in Dutch ovens. Again, because they can do all that wonderful baking and it, it'll hold heat and keep food hot for a while. Uh, so it's like its own warming tray as well. But then after that, people that were uh, going to go on camping, hunting, fishing trips. Dutch oven was something to take along. And there were pretty much in the 50s and 1960s, use of Dutch ovens kind of fell by the wayside. People wanted things that were lighter weight. And then for a while, we all thought that, you know, Teflon was the wonderful thing. But then people have gone back to cast iron in general, but especially Dutch ovens since about the 1980s, partly because of its history and its heritage. In fact, Cast iron gets referred to as being heritage cookware. Even if you currently don't own any, but decide you'd like to start doing this, know that it's not just yourself and the next generation that can enjoy using whatever cast iron you have, but five, six, even more generations on with proper care, they could still be using the cast iron that you buy today. This pot is a good example. This pot was made in the mid to late 1800s still gets cooked in, still cooks like a dream. Now, if you happen to have what you know was great granny's Dutch oven, ways that you can tell for sure if it's old. First thing is to look at where the bale is attached. Does it look like a, a number seven or um, almost like an ear uh, on it versus the flat shelf that you see on 20th and 21st century ovens as far as where this bale is attached. The other thing on old ovens you'll see usually a line on the bottom and that is uh, where it's been poured into the mold. So that gives you another indication. Now, just because it doesn't have a name on it, excuse me there for the noise, just because it doesn't have a name on it doesn't mean it's necessarily an old oven because lodge manufacturing, the only uh, still USA made cast iron, didn't start putting their name on their Dutch ovens until in about the mid 1980s when they realized, hey, we need to advertise so that people know that we're American made uh, and, and they make a really good quality. A lot of people are collectors of cast iron. You may have heard of Wagner and Griswold. So there's another whole heritage and collectability with those ovens as well. So heritage cookware makes wonderful tasting food. And if you're a history buff and like to do uh, reenactments, a Dutch oven definitely is something that you'll want to have whatever time period that you're looking at from uh, 1700s on to today.